Hey, what's up world? Jeff Lerner here. And in this video, we are talking about building your personal brand. Um, you know, this, this branding conversation, kind of a confused conversation. We have a lot of baggage with that word branding, a lot of stuff that's carried over from a world where br your brand meant something very different than what it means today. So we're gonna talk about how to properly understand and build your personal brand. All right, so we're talking about personal branding. I'm gonna start by telling you what is, I think, the coolest thing about personal branding in the world that we live in today. Is it used to be, well, there's, there's really two aspects to it that make it so cool. It used to be that your personal brand, or I'm sorry, just that, that a brand was this set of variables, right? Set of stuff that showed up in your marketing and and had to be sort of packaged and communicated and homogenized across all your touch points in the market. So things like your colors, your logo, you know, the aspect ratio of your logo and having a horizontal and a, and a vertical version of your logo and what fonts could be used in writing and again, your color palette. And we have this like this hangover about that, that that's what branding is. And we're like, well, what do, what do they mean now when they talk about my personal brand? So. I guess I need to get a logo made or, well, yeah, I mean that, that might end up being part of it. It's not a, not a terrible idea if you're going to produce content or whatnot, but what's so cool now is that your personal brand is really just refining and I would say enhancing and optimizing who you actually are in the world in terms of how you want to be seen in the light of your business. That's your personal brand. Who do you want to be in this world? It's an opportunity. It's like I remember when I, I, uh, I switched schools after my sophomore year. I left this one school I was at and I went to a different school. And I'd been at the school that I was at since kindergarten, from kindergarten to 10th grade. I was 11 years in this school. And I felt like the whole school had already decided who I was. And I remember going to this new school and feeling like, hey, I have an opportunity to kind of decide, sort of change how I'm perceived and who I want to be known as. It doesn't mean like oh, I'm going to fake everybody out. It just means like I get a fresh start to, to define myself. You know, we're all known for certain things, right? That's personal branding is in the world. It's like your first day of college and saying, all right, well, my high school self was sort of my lesser self. Now I'm going to decide who do I want to be in this world. I have a little more autonomy. I get to choose my classes. I get to choose my friends. I get to choose choose my living environment, to choose my major. I get to have more of a say in who I am in this world. That's personal branding. It's not fake. That's the problem. So many people get stuck feeling like it's like this fake contrivance to decide how you want to be known in the world. It's not. It's an opportunity. And the second thing that's so cool about it, so that's the first thing that's so cool about it, is it's like stuff that really matters in, in your own life and actually impacts your life. It doesn't just impact your business. Getting clear on your personal brand and your business, if it's an authentic personal brand, is gonna carry through your whole life in a really positive way. But the other thing that's so cool about it is that the reason business branding has historically meant things like colors and fonts and styles and logos and formats is because we were essentially trying to create pattern recognition in the consumer, right? And we do all these things to create patterns. We say, oh, if it's if it's white and it's cursive on a red background and it's written a certain way, we want that to mean Coca-Cola. You know, an apple with a bite taken out of it, we want that to mean apple, right? I mean, do all this work to spend millions and millions, companies spend billions of dollars just trying to get people to recognize their patterns, right? You're trying to tap into a certain part of the brain that creates those associations. Here's what's so cool about personal branding is there's already a part of the brain that's way better at pattern recognition than anything that big businesses could ever tap into unless they do the same thing, which is facial recognition. The human brain has evolved over thousands and thousands of years, thousands of generations to be so good at recognizing faces. You can, somebody, somebody can literally flip by you that fast. 
If I fought, boom, Michael Jackson, that fast and he's gone, you go, oh, it's the king of pop right there. You didn't, you didn't say, well, what? Let me, let me check the Pantone palette, see what his hair color was, and let me measure the gap between his nose and his upper lip, which, hell, it changed seven times anyways. Like, no, it's just Michael Jackson. In fact, he even tried to mess up his, I mean, I'm, like, I'm not like taking shots at Michael Jackson, but he intentionally reconfigured his face a number of times, and he couldn't break the pa pattern recognition. If he was adhering to corporate brand standards, he was doing a very poor job because he was consistently changing his most recognizable aspect. And yet we still knew who he was. He still couldn't break the pattern. The human mind is so wired to identify people. Personal branding is the greatest hack in the history of marketing. You don't have to spend all this money to try to get people to associate colors and shapes and letters and fonts to your name or to your business. You got it right here. It's called your mug. For better or for worse, that one thing that you were given on the way out your mama's womb, you know, and, and I'm here to tell you, it don't have to be the best looking one out there. It's actually been proven that it hurts you if it is when it comes to personal branding. Even in Hollywood, they're not looking for the best looking guy or the best, the most beautiful world. They're looking for, they, what do they call it? They call it the it factor, right? They're looking for somebody that has that, that little bit of a twist, a little bit of a flavor that's not, it's maybe a classic beauty, but there's something, think about like Catherine Hepburn, think about, I mean, Angelina Jolie, any of these people we think of as a classic Hollywood beauties, they're actually, they look different. They don't just look generically pretty. The ones who look generically pretty, they put them on models and nobody knows their name. They put them, or they put up their models and they put them on catwalks, nobody knows their name. You know why they want people that are generically pretty to be models? Because you'll be more focused on the clothes. But if they want you focused on the character, then even within the framework of beauty, physical beauty, they want people, they look a little different, right? I'm telling you, the human mind is incredible when it comes to recognizing faces. So if you see it for what it is, oh my gosh, there's an opportunity. Instead of feeling the, the shame and the insecurity and the stigma and whatever I think about myself and my looks, look, I have a genetic condition. It's called Wardenburg syndrome. Look it up. I'm not considered an attractive guy by the classical definition. Like if I went into a modeling agency, they'd hold rulers up to my face and be like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe try to make it in the theater where it's more about your personality, right? And yet I have a pretty strong personal brand that's getting stronger every day. The more what? The more what? The more I just put my face out there. Yeah. This, this right here, making my face big. That is building my business. How crazy is that? We live in a world where I just built my business because these tools, these distribution networks exist where you get your face out in front of millions of people for not a whole lot of money. I decided a little over a year ago that I wanted to do something a little different with my life. I've been a digital marketer for, I guess at that time, about nine, ten, ten years. Well, I guess I technically started this crazy thing back in 2016, but I got real serious about it in 2018, about building my personal brand. So at that point, I'd been an inter internet marketer and digital agency owner, you know, between those two things, I've been doing that for about 10 years. Made plenty of money, you know, generated over $30 million in sales through the internet. So like, I wasn't having to clock in every day, I wasn't having to go to work. I'm not a billionaire, but I'll tell you something about being a billionaire. One is, if you wanna be a billionaire, start by making like 10 million bucks. If you have 10 million bucks, it's a whole hell of a lot easier to make a billion dollars than it is starting from scratch. And if you want 10 million bucks, start by making a million bucks. If you want a million bucks, start by making 10,000 bucks. That's how I did. It took me four months of hitting it hard. I'm talking 14, 15 hour days teaching myself affiliate marketing, digital business. And first two and a half months, I lost money. Finally, I spent more money. Hey babe, shooting a YouTube video on the Peloton. Hells yeah, got an hour and 44 minutes into this thing. And this conversation is being recorded live on the video and I already told Wyatt to keep it in because this is how it really is. <laughs> Are you coming home? Okay, lo love you, see you soon, bye. Took me four, four months to make my first 10 grand. My seventh month, I made over 70 grand. It's a tipping point business. It grows fast, but it has to suck for a while. Most people never make it through the suck. 
And so, and the thing is, the suck it, the suck is an extended period for some people. So I was balls to the wall. I was 14 hours a day. I was almost half a million dollars in debt. I, my wife was leaving me. Everybody thought I was a loser. I had a lot to prove. I, in those, let's call it my first six months, I crammed more internet marketing experience and digital skills development into those six months than most people do in five years. So I got a decade's worth of results in my first year. Uh, 18 months took me to pay off almost half a million dollars in debt. But you know, I just got through the 10,000 hours faster than most people do, right? Man, I really lost my train of thought. That was my wife that called. But this video is about how, oh yeah, your personal brand. <laughs> Your personal brand. See, fortunately, part of my personal brand, I have decided, is that I'm not gonna bullshit people. I'm gonna keep it real. And if I forget what I'm talking about, I'll tell you. And hopefully I'll get back on track. But yeah, your personal brand, it's so cool because, you know, like I said, first of all, it makes you a better person because it spills over in your life the more you get clear on who you wanna be. And secondly, you don't have to spend all this money to create this pattern recognition because people just recognize faces. Naturally, it's just basically personal branding is about two things. It's about getting really clear on who you are, what you stand for, what your messaging is, what language you speak, and we'll talk about that. I'll t tell you some more in detail about that because that's been a huge part of what I've done. And the second thing is just get over all your shyness about putting yourself out there. We live in a world where awareness is authority. You put yourself out there enough, eventually you just bludgeon people into acceptance. Oh God, this guy must be legit. He must know something because he's in my freaking news feed every 12 seconds. Eventually people just, and here's the thing, it doesn't, it depends what you're doing. Like for me, 2018, fall 2018, I decided, you know what? I'm going on a big, I'm going on a big, big mission. I'm skipping AAA. I'm going straight to the show. I'm playing a big game. I'm going to, I'm going to build a platform around the concept that life is meant to be awesome and that to develop awesomeness. And then we talk about the language and figuring out what you stand for, what language you speak to develop awesomeness. I'm going to develop a concept around physical, personal, and professional excellence, the three P's of excellence. I'm going to build something called the action stool with three legs, knowledge, community, and strategy. I'm going to start thinking long-term, create these three phases of legacy, cash flow phase, your growth phase, and your wealth phase. I'm going to create this concept about how digital and physical are converging. And in the end, it's all really just real estate. It's not like I light bulbed all this on day one. This has evolved. It's been a year now. But the way it's evolved is through talking about it, through putting myself out there, talking about it. Now, here I am over a year into it. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book to basically redefine what I believe is the formula for getting wealthy in the new economy. But it's all stuff I figured out through talking about it. It's all stuff I figured out through clarifying my personal brand. It's all stuff I figured out through honing in on my objectives about what the heck I'm trying to do in this world and who I want to be. Yeah, I had to make some money first. I had to make some money so that my life wasn't gonna be constantly oppressed and undermined by fear, by scarcity, by worrying about food and shelter and other lower level needs. But that's what you gotta do in this world. That's how I came up with the three phases of legacy. I looked at my own life. Here's the thing, if you decide that you wanna build a life that's so awesome that it's even worth studying, then you'll find out all the truths of life inside of that decision. I wanted to have such a good marriage, such a good relationship, that it would actually be educational and informative to study my own marriage. I have a quote, what did I say? Uh, learn like mad, become so knowledgeable that you get smarter listening to yourself talk. Like commit to just the greatness of knowledge and implementation and make your life the laboratory where you prove out all these experiments about what it takes to have a great life. Your personal brand is just the documentation of those experiments, right? And it doesn't matter, and this is where I was going with that, is it doesn't matter who you are, what your niche is. Last fall, I decided I'm going on this big play, right? I'm gonna go, you know, quote, compete, and it's a, I'm, I'm a big blue ocean thinker, so I don't really think of it as, I, don't, I stay out of the, the bloody water. I, I see it as creating my own blue ocean of opportunity by synthesizing digital, and uh, digital marketing, real estate, physical, personal, professional, holistic excellence, living it out, doing it through a real organic marketing strategy, not trying to be all polished. I'm gonna create my own blue ocean of amazingness, right? That's the approach that I take. But still, when it comes to the Facebook algorithms and the YouTube algorithms and the, the money that I have to spend and the, the bid auctions that I have to compete in, 
I'm still considered a red ocean competitor of Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, Russell Brunson, Ty Lopez, James Altucher, Tim Ferriss, Dean Graziosi. The list is long. By the way, I know the list because they study the shit out of the list. I learned from these guys. You're never going to be great at something. Try to figure it all out in a silo by yourself. Learn from the people that have already blazed the trail for what you want to do, right? In order to compete in that ocean, I had to go big or again, red, blue ocean, whatever you say. But in order to play that game, I had to go big. I had to put myself out there a lot of times. I've had videos viewed in the tens of millions now in over a year that I've been doing this. But here's the thing. Now, I, went to, I was at lunch with a guy the other day. He's a, a local real estate agent here in Southern Utah. Southern Utah is, the, the main town is called St. George, but it's based in a market, a county that's got about 200,000 people in it. And I was joking with him. I was like, because he took me to lunch. He's like, Jeff, he's, a, he's somebody I knew from a while back. He said, hey, can I take you to lunch? I want to kind of pick your brain and hear what you're doing. Because he, he's like, dude, I see you in my feed all the time. Like, and I know you're not just targeting St. George. You're targeting, you know, U.S., Canada, Australia, the United Kingdom, and New Zealand. You call it, you know, the tier one big five countries. He's like, if you're showing up in my feed in St. George, Utah that much, given the game that you're playing, you must be going pretty big. And I want to take you to lunch and I'd like to hear about it. And I said, yeah, sure, let's do it. I said, you know, you and your peers are lucky that I don't decide to just sell real estate here in Southern Utah. Because... Once you crack the code on this strategy, you know, I'm giving it a 10, 20 year run to go compete with the big boys in one of the biggest industries on earth, personal and professional development, you know, business, entrepreneurship, business leadership. Like that's a, that's a big sphere and it's global, right? What if I was local? What if I was a local real estate agent? What if I was a local chiropractor? What if I was a local plumber? What if I was a local electrician? What if I was a local pest control guy? What if I owned a a salvage yard and I wanted you to bring your scrap metal to me? What if I had a pawn shop? What if I had a restaurant? What if I had a food delivery company? What if I cleaned pools? What if I was a personal trainer? What if I was an attorney? There is no vocation that you could not give me that I would not go slaughter my competition. And I mean that in the most red ocean of ways that I would not go slaughter my competition because of what I'm saying about personal branding with fearlessness, and a willingness to go big and be out there more than the next guy, you already win because of the way the human brain is wired to just recognize faces. Whoever's face is seen the most in association with whatever the business does, if I wanted to put all the other mechanics out of business, I'd just plaster my face all over the internet talking about, let me fix your car, let me fix your car, I'll come to you, I'll bring your car, I'll tow your car, I give coupons, I give incentives, I give, I give referrals, I go, ah, whatever. I'm Jeff Lerner and I'll, I get the job done right. Like we live in a world now where you tap into people's facial recognitions and you act confident and you act excited about life. Enthusiasm is like 95% of the game. Just be people's ray of light in their day. Make it so that your commercial, your video, your ad, your whatever, people go, I don't know what that guy was talking about. I like the way he made me feel. My Angelou said it. People forget what you do, they forget what you say, they never forget how you make them feel. And when, they, when she says they remember how you make them feel, what is she really saying? They remember your name? Are you great at remembering names? No, you're great at remembering faces. We all are. So you wanna build a business, you wanna build a brand in this world? Figure out your face, good news, you don't have to. It's already there, it's already worked out. Figure out your energy, be positive. Good news is that'll just make you better at life all around. Figure out your message, uh, what you stand for, what you have to say. We'll talk a little more about that. And then start putting yourself out there a lot and you'll win. You'll win the battle because most people just won't do the work. Most people won't put themselves out there that much. Most people are too shy. They play too small, they think too small. So Grant Cardone's talking about when he talks about 10X thinking, he says, he's like, you know, people say, I say 10X, people think I'm talking about doing 10 times as much work as the next guy. Well, that's a given. If you want to be great, you're going to have to out hustle, out scrap, outwork the next guy. I'm talking about thinking 10 times bigger. If I had it to do over again, again, I don't, I don't agree with everything Cardone says. Although frankly, I do agree with most of it. Don't always love his delivery. I agree with this. He says, if I had it to do over again, I'd start thinking 10 times bigger, 10 times sooner. I'm 40. He's 63. I'm taking his advice 23 years ahead of time. Think big. 
Think big. If I wanted to be a real estate agent, I wouldn't be thinking, well, let me go dominate St. George. Dominating St. George would be my 12 month phase one, maybe 24 month phase one, realistically. Years three, four, and five would be about dominating Utah. Years six through 10 would be about, I don't know, probably creating software or some kind of major process improvement. I mean, real estate's been pretty disrupted. I'm not sure there's a reason I'm not taking that on on the transaction side. I'll take it on on the education side. That's part of the 2020 plan for Entra. But just think big because you've already got the number one tool you need to get your big idea connected with your brand. And it's your face. Most people don't get it. So if you just click with it, you can do amazing things. All right? I got four more videos to shoot during this bike ride. And I'm already at two hours on the bike ride now, almost two hours. So I'm gonna wrap this video. On the next video, I'm gonna talk about the one piece that I kind of left, un, uh, that I didn't close the loop on in this, which is about how to really figure out your messaging, figure out what you have to say. Again, your face is done for you. Putting yourself out there, that's just about getting fearless. Uh, but figuring out what you have to say, your energy, you know, anybody kind of tap into that, just gotta, just gotta want it. But figuring out what you have to say, that probably warrants its own video. So that's coming up next. Listen, first of all, prepare to watch the next video because it's gonna talk about figuring out who you are, what you have to say. But also, you should watch all my videos because there's nobody who loves your life that's not already a part of it more than me. I love what's possible for you. I love who you could become. I don't know you well enough to say if I love you now, but I love who you could become because I know what people are capable of. And I see it in your life even if you don't. So if you want to talk more to somebody who sees what's possible for you, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell, get notified when I put out new videos and watch as many of them as you can because I promise it'll take you a lot further than Seinfeld or South Park or Third Rock from the Sun or geez, I'm dating myself. I don't know, what are the big TV shows now? I don't watch them because I'm trying to build a, a life that's so fascinating that I'd rather be studying my own life than watching what people have to say on TV. Catch you next time. Hold that smile, Wyatt. Enthusiasm. Face. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one.